Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and this is June 24th, 2012 edition of Market Outlook. So we had quite the interesting week with the sell-off of 250 points on Thursday following the Fed announcement, and let's see where that leaves us on the technicals. First of all, taking a look at the Dow, you can see that on the daily chart, we had a declining 50-day moving average. We closed above it with an inside day. Once we took out that inside day low and the prior day's low, the market just sort of disappeared. You had an opportunity to sell the higher opening and the opening range breakdown. Now, where are we here? We're sitting with another inside day, and that does not look particularly good, especially if we take out the lows from Thursday. So you probably get some follow-through, potential test of the 200-day moving average, um, or more. Now, the market internals are also working off some overbought readings, and that also plays into that hand of looking more to the downside. However, what's of interest is the recovery on Friday on greater volume than the day of the sell-off. So interesting, which has broken its overall pattern, is that volume to the upside has been more pronounced than volume to the downside, a distinct change from the way the market had been operating during its run-up earlier this year. Now let's take a look at the Qs. Qs, similar picture, didn't quite get the inside day, had a pronounced sell-off, and you can see this little head and shoulders bottom here that we were talking about. You took it out, had two closes above that declining 50-day moving average, and you know one thing to always remember is these declining 50-day moving averages or these declining moving averages with that slope is not something to be ignored. Sometimes you run through it, close a couple days above it, but it's like a, a, a gravitational pull on the market. So again, you've got another inside day, and look how you have a convergence of a lot of different things going on. Number one, you have a very nice solid trend line that was penetrated, a return move to the neckline that has been broken and failed. So if we can get above that neckline, Again, all bets are off potentially um, on the downside that you'll get that follow through. On the other hand, a test of a return move to the trend line, a return move to the neckline, and a failure of Thursday's lows would not be good for the market. I would expect another test of the rising 200-day moving average at a minimum. Let's take a look at the market internals. First, let's look at VIX. On VIX, you can see we basically closed under the lower end of the Bollinger Band. Uh, that is a distinct sell signal, uh, short term in nature, a couple days to potentially a week or more. And that complied very, very nicely on Thursday. So you got almost instant gratification on that. Now also, on a longer term basis, you can see, as we mentioned last week, we started moving under the 200-day moving average, uh, which was a positive, right, sentiment, the fear uh, re being removed from the market. And then again, we went down even further below the 50-day moving average, which further as a shorter term or intermediate term signal was extremely positive. We got what we would consider irrational exuberance or uh, lots of complacency, and that generated the sell-off. But So we're still on a short-term sell signal. Longer term, we seem to be looking okay. Now, the thing that's really curious is that you can see we're pretty much not that far from the lows of this uh, volatility index for the year, and the market seems a lot more vulnerable uh, to sell-offs, and of course, that would mean a rally back up uh, in this indicator. So there seems to be a mispricing uh, that would foretell uh, more movement to the downside uh, in, the, in the equities market, or that this is telling you that 
the sell-off was incorrect. But one of these two things are absolutely wrong. And basically, we're going to have to follow that short-term structure and short-term price patterns and play off of that because uh, there's definitely a mispricing here. So either the VIX is completely wrong or the market uh, is, is completely wrong on the sell-off and will continue its uh, recovery as it did on Friday. Let's take a look at the market indicators. Market indicators are telling uh, yet a, another story. Uh, we were concerned and we had mentioned that the market was getting to overbought regions. And as soon as it hooked down, we got a sell signal on the McClellan oscillator. The market complied the next day down 250 points. You can see our shorter term indicators one week or so out um, is the advanced decline. We got to levels not seen since the end of last year. Uh, so we got pretty overbought on advancing versus declining issues, hooked back down in concert with the McClellan oscillator, which is intermediate. We also got uh, a similar and a more pronounced sell signal on up-down volume. So as you can see, we have uh, bona fide overbought uh, signals that are now being worked off, but they are on sell signals. Let's also take a look at the TLTs, because that's an interesting story in itself. Again, the sell-off really didn't propel these bonds to, um, to new highs. And in fact, the market uh, in bonds basically moved to uh, basically unchanged for the week, which the normal flight to, uh, to the safety of U.S. bonds really did not take place. So that's a curiosity, too. We still have a potential blow-off top. You can see here huge volume to the upside on this explosive move. Um, on that sell-off uh, at the end of May, early, early June. You had the inside day and then a potential top being confirmed by the market not being able to uh, follow through and, in fact, closed uh, on the lows um, after that inside day, which we have not been able to trade above. So if we can get below this uh, 124 level in the TLT's potential, that the overall structure here, this could have been the, uh, yet another uh, blow-off top. So again, the normal uh, risk-off trade, not really um, having the, uh, the follow-through that you might have expected on the sell-off on Thursday. So let's keep track of this critical level here. And also keep in mind, that the longer term trend is certainly intact. So this is definitely looking at the shorter term structure on the daily charts to uh, pick a potential uh, trading top. But you know, let's you know review where we are on the weeklies. And as you can see on a weekly basis, we're still accelerating to the upside, both on the uh, 65 week, excuse me, the 200 week and the 65 week moving averages. So. The longer term trends certainly intact, but suggesting a potential blow off here uh, in uh, U.S. bonds. Let's take a look at silver because this is also an interesting chart. On the dailies, now this is um, continuous silver futures, COMEX uh, minis on silver. And as you can see, we're tracing out a potential head and shoulders top, or is this now really major support? I mean, let's put in this trend line. And you can see on this trend line here, right, this is this, uh, this level here around 26 or 2680 has been really important support going back all the way to 2010. So Clearly, you've had uh, on the daily charts a bearish market phase. This is the lowest close you've had since um, the last quarter in 2010. 
So are we going to bounce? Now, obviously, there's, um, there's lots of forces at play. Silver is um, you know, a good percentage, an industrial metal. So between uh, it being used both as an industrial and an alternative play on gold or a currency, uh, let's keep track of silver because uh, if we can uh, crack this uh, 26 and a half level and trade under there, uh, that definitely is going to telling you something about the global economy and inflationary ex expectations as well. So interesting. Now, the other thing to note is we are on an oversold condition. So the fact is you can see our short-term RSI oversold um, at a critical support level. So let's see if these two things can hold. We'll take a look at that short-term structure in the market and trade accordingly. Uh, this is an interesting inflection point. So let's keep a look at the silver, take a look at the bonds, um, and also we have that inside day for the key indices that is going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So definitely interesting point. Uh, if you uh, would like to see how we trade it uh, live uh, in the markets, we have a number of services. Uh, Mish's Market Minute, which is more of a swing to mini swing trading. And I run a day trading room called Day Trading with Hot Scans. So if you're more of a day trader, you can follow us there. Anyway, that concludes this week's overall view of the market. Hope you enjoyed it. Have the great rest of your weekend. This is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGauge.com, and this is the June 24th edition of Market Outlook. Thanks for listening, and bye for now.